Hey everybody, Agent Fluffy here, and I'm going to be doing a fanfic read of One Apple Equals 8 Bits by NTSTS. So, first chapter, there are, um, six chapters. So, anyway, we're going to get started on the first one. It'll probably be split into parts, so, anyway, I hope you enjoy. Chapter 1. Strange Device from a Strange Place Rain, rain, the bell of the carousel boutique rang loud as Twilight nudged the door open with some difficulty. She was holding a paper bag by his rope handle between her teeth, and trying to keep it from being squished between the door and the wall proved to be a challenge, which she negotiated with a muffled grunt. <clears throat> Eventually emerging victorious in the boutique's interior, she grinned and spat the bag unceremoniously onto the floor in direct contradiction to her care to ensure its structural integrity. She was the only pony inside, as far as she could tell. Rarity? Her words didn't echo, but they faded to the decorated walls and bundles of fabric as though the air sucked them away. She was sure Rarity would be expecting her. They had made plans, after all. Rarity! She called out again, leaving the bag on the floor of the boutique and stepping cautiously across the room. She knew that Rarity's business did double duty as her place of residence as well, which means that unless Rarity is run out for some reason, she was likely to be found somewhere else, inside. Twilight heard the first hint of noise since she has entered as she neared the sewing corner. A sound trickled toward her, and a turn of her head found the directions of the commotion. A series of buzzes and beeps along with some pony's voice she couldn't quite make out, dancing down the hallway just to her left. Twilight peeked her head around the corner of the hall cautiously and caught a bit more of the mishmash of sounds. She couldn't place any of it, but it sounded rushed and frantic. Eventually, words emerged from the haze of unfamiliar mechanical hubbub. No, don't, not over there. Come on, be careful. Pinkie Pie? The voice and chipper tone were far too animated to be Rarity. But what was Pinkie Pie doing over at Rarity's boutique, especially without Rarity around? Even more than that, she sounded upset, like she was trying to convince someone away from a very bad course of action. Twilight started down the hallway, keeping her ears perched for any future signs of what she might be walking into. The boops and beeps continued, along with a ticking sound that sounded like a peculiar clock of some kind, or a timer. No, 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 no. I need you to help. Look, this is important. We don't... Pinky's voice is cut off by a horrendous screech, like a cross between a steam engine and a cat hissing in a volume that made Twilight cover her ears in distress. Ah! Oh no! Oh my goodness! Oh my goodness! Oh my goodness! This is bad! Really? Really bad! Okay, I think we can still fix it. It's not too late. The big man's grown louder and more insistent now, ticking faster and faster as Twilight walked towards the source of the sound. It was coming from behind a closed door at a hallway's end. The volume of the terrible mechanical noises make their way through the wood without effort. Twilight could hear Pinky's panic as she neared the door. Was everything okay? Pinky sounded like she would need help, but if there was something dangerous behind that door. Maybe rushing into things wasn't the best idea. If we don't hurry, this whole place is going to explode! We have to be quick! Did she just say explode? Twilight whined. She was only a few feet away from the door. If something was going to explode... What would she do? She could burst through the door and try to help, but that might only make things worse. Or she could run and try to get some pony to help. Five seconds! Pinky's voice screamed through the wall. Twilight swallowed, feeling a sudden dryness of her throat. She didn't know what to do. Anxious, she let her hoof rest on the door, ready to push it inward. She could hear Pinky's counting through to the haze of her worry, knowing that she only had a few seconds. If this was her choice, it was now or never. Twilight threw the door open. No! Julie's gonna blow! Ah! Twilight threw herself on the ground and braced her legs over her head, helping to shelter herself from whatever blast she was about to immerse herself in. Twilight saw the life flash before her eyes, growing up in Cantalot, the first day she had arrived in Ponyville, a hundred other memories playing back as she prepared for an explosion she hadn't even anticipated a moment ago, and was now going to send her to the pony afterlife. Her last thought was that she w wished she had moved faster. The sound came, rattling her eardrums. It was awful, a hundred bleeps and bloops and the final tick smooshed together. 
twilight gasped and sent her last thoughts off into nothingness a few seconds passed the sound of the explosion faded into quiet twilight blinked ah we almost had it that was sweet bell's voice twilight opened her eyes twilight what are you doing down there Yankee pie was there looking down at twilight with a confused expression twilight looked around and sure Pinkie Pie, are you okay? I, I thought I heard you said there were going to be explosions. There sure was! We're on the last level, too! Pinkie Pie looked over Twilight, who was still huddled on the floor, preparing for a detonation. Did I have the volume up too high? Twilight blinked again and peered out from behind her foreleg shelter. Sweet Belle was sitting in the front, which appeared to be a large box with a sheet of glass, making a window on the front. What she saw inside, she couldn't say. It was a strange black background with tiny numbers and letters all over, and two large words in the center, bright red. Game over! I think you maybe had your volume up too high, Pinky. Sweet Bell giggled <laughs> and set something down on the floor. A square link that was connected to the box with a window with, by a black cord. Pinky laughed along <laughs> with her and smiled out apologetically. <laughs> Oops! Sorry! I just get excited when things are getting so intense! This game is a blast! Game? Twilight's voice was dripping with confusion. A minute ago, and she had been ready to kiss her flank goodbye in a burst of fire and nitrous. And now she was staring into a blinking box with words dancing in front of her, which was apparently some sort of game. Yeah! Game! It's this great thing Rarity found the flame mark- Oh my gosh! It's Twilight's amazing! Pinky Spice bursting with enthusiasm cut Sweetie off in its explanation. Pinky grabbed Twilight by one of her forelegs and pulled her upright, dragging her over towards the window box. The window was changed now and was showing two ponies jumping in circles over a screen with the word Coltra superimposed on the top. This is really the best thing ever! It's some kind of weird gypsy magic! Pinky, there's no such thing as gypsy magic. And if there were... That's not at all a politically correct term for referring to it. But it is! Mernie said she brought it from a pony with fancy hooded clothes and she talked like this! He slipped into her best approximation of a Stalin grad accent. And said, Ah, oh, Miss Pretty Pony, I think I have a treasure you will find very appealing. Pinkie Pie gestured broadly toward a strange box sitting at the foot of the window container, which Twilight could see the two cords seemed to be attached to. And she wasn't sure, but eventually the other pony convinced her, and then she bought and brought it home. And it's some kind of magic that makes pictures and things appear on this screen, and you can move them around with these doohickeys. Pinkie, calm down. Twilight was trying to recover from the burst of adrenaline that was rushed through her body when she was sure she was about to be blown to smithereens, and Pinky's rapid-fire explanation wasn't helping the situation. Pinky stopped the bouncing she had started midway through her sentence and rocked back and forth on her hind legs, looking at Twilight expectantly. So, it's, it's some kind of machine? Or a game? It's both! The machine makes the game! Twilight tilted her head to her side, raising one eyebrow in confusion. Here, let me show you, said Pinky, grabbing Twilight between her forelegs and dragging her over to where Sweet Belle was still sitting on the floor, watching with an amused look on her face. Pinkie Pie grabbed one of the objects tethered to the strange box and placed it in Twilight's hooves. A thing has a peculiar texture, like a cross between metal and wood. It had a black finish, and there were some protrusions on one side, buttons that jutted out from the surface about half an inch. Okay, so this is the thing you use to make stuff happen over there. Pinkie Pie imports towards. At toy magia come red sparkle. Twilight blinked to the fur cap that appeared suddenly atop Pinkie's head. Conversation with Pinkie always had a habit of rousing more questions than they answered. Okay, besides magic, can you show me how it works? Connection, of course. Pinkie grabbed one of the square objects connected via cord and held it between her hooves. Okay, so look up in the screen there. See the blue pony doing cool spins? Twilight looked up and saw exactly that, or rather, a crude approximation of what might be a pony. It was made up of tiny colored blocks and was transitioning roughly between different poses, sliding inelegantly from frame to frame before a spinning jump. If Twilight squinted, she could believe it was a pony. Yes, I see him. Twilight, would you help me defeat the changelings and save a question? 
he could split squeaked even higher than a normal register as she spoke from a block of pixels on the screen right in front of her. Twilight rolled her eyes. Pinky, oh, 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 look! I can do a super big jump! The blackish pony blob rocketed to the air, landed with a boop and a flat line of black meant to represent the ground. Pinky, oh, sorry. Pinky blushed and continued her explanation. Sorry, you're too thing to control the stuff on the screen. You can jump and shoot fireballs. Pinky demonstrated by sending a red blob across the screen. And it's your job to save the world from the bad guys. That seemed kind of juvenile, Pinky. No offense. Twilight gave a sideways look to Sweetbell, whose mouth formed to inklings of an affronted frown. I mean, this, isn't this kind of like playing maple leaf on the playground, but with blobby ponies on the window? No, there's leaves and blobs and big explosions, too. Right, but what makes it fun? I don't know, it just is. It's cool to press a button and have something happen right in front of you. Look, you try it. Press a button on the side. Twilight eyed the controlling device suspiciously, short handing it to the controller in her head. The right side has two large bumps, which supposedly were trigger buttons. Twilight poked the one in the far right. The screen box made a low boop, and the pony blob on the screen jumped into the air. Twilight paused for a moment, and then pushed the button again. Boop, jump. Hmm. Boop, jump. Try using your other hoof to move around. Pinky handled the controller to Twilight, who placed it on the floor. The left side had a sort of cross, with one extension pointed in each cardinal direction. Twilight pressed down the right arrow experimentally, and the pony on the screen ran to the right. She pressed the other side, and he ran to the left. Still curious, Twilight tapped the second button. A red blob shot across the screen. Well, it was novel, at least. All right, I understand how you play, but how does it work? I only told you, silly, it's magic! Pinky, magic is a concept so fast, you might as well say it works with science. What particular magic is going on here? Is there a spell on the box? Is there a miniature gremlin inside that screen jumping when I press this button? Pinky looked ponderous for a moment and placed her hoof to her chin as her eyes drifted in thought. Hmm, I don't think there's a gremlin. Well then, while I was beginning to sound impatient. Rarity said there's a gem. Three Bell's boys joined the conversation for the first time, and Twilight turns toward the filly, raising one eyebrow in curiosity. A gem? Sweetie nodded enthusiastically. Uh-huh, that's how she found it. She was in the market when her horse started to go haywire, like she... When she got her cutie mark, and she followed it and found the box, and the pony was selling it, told her there there was a gem inside that made it work. It's a magic gem. So I haven't heard of any such scene in her many studies of enchantment. Some gems were inherently magical, but weaving spells around them was an area of little application. Hmm. What could be done with a gem besides perhaps making it brighter? Hmm, there is a possibility that a well-carved gem could be used as a vessel for internal refraction. With the right magical application, it could become some sort of battery, powering the device with the reserve of energy. Or if some pony got creative, maybe even more than that. I think I get it now. Uh, sort of. Great, Pinky Beans. I'm glad you do, because I have no idea. Twilight blanched. But it's lots of fun. You should try playing with us. Twilight eyed the screen with a raised eyebrow, watching the bright orange pony Swee was controlling bounce around the screen, unable to progress as the pony Twilight held to the controller for it was stuck at the opposite end, unmoving. I don't think shooting fireballs at Changeling is really my idea of a good time, Pinky. Pinky shoved the control Twilight shoved the controller forward on the floor towards Swee Bell. Thanks anyway, though. Ooh, ooh, that's okay, cause there's a lot more games than just this one. Twilight's eyebrows in a perpetual state of curiosity. She looked like she had a fish hook pulling it in one direction. Oh? Yeah, yeah, this one's really fun, but there's a lot more. Hold on, let me put one in. Pinkie Pie bounced over the box with a bottom of a large screen. She leaned down to it and bumped the top with her hoof, made it, which made a soft clunk. The sound also followed the strange car popping out of the side of the box. As Pinky grasped between her hooves, and pushed towards herself. She set it gently to the ground and put a similar looking card from one container that Twilight hadn't caught immediate sight of. She gave it a quick blow like someone put, put out a birthday candle and then slid it inside the box, 
closing it with another pop of her hoof. The blobby ponies in black background on the screen vanished for a moment before flaring into life with a flash of light. The word Equestria Quest 2 fell from the top of the glass in blocky letters over top of the background in trees and mountains. Equestria Quest? The second one! Number one wasn't bad either, though. How many of these games did you play already, Pinky? I still haven't tried them all, but I think I know which ones are the best. Well, I eyed the tell screen suspiciously. So what's great? so great about this one? Do you do something other than shoot chain planes? Pinky grinned and grabbed up her controller. Yep, you shoot trolls and dragons! She like rolled her eyes. It's great, you're the hero on the quest to save your princess. <clears throat> It's great! You're a hero on a quest to save your prince from the evil king of chaos! He could press on the directional pad and the pony with great blocks around her, his body appeared on the screen and started running to the right. You're rescuing a prince? Isn't it the other way around? He narrowed her eyes knowingly. Come on, Twilight! You've met enough boys in your life, do any of them seem like they're cut out for saving the princess? She had a point. This is all about girl power! You can use the sword and collect treasures and fight the Dragon King in the end. The Dragon King is really hard. Sweet piped up and Pinky nodded in agreement. Twilight wasn't sure what to make all, all of this. A one who it was clearly an elaborate miracle of magical technology. Part of Twilight wants to desperately to disassemble each of its components set to work understanding how the old whole thing functioned. On the other hoof, Twilight didn't see even the slightest appeal in pretending to be the block shaped pony running around on a glass screen. Hitting monsters and saving the world. It was the farthest thing from practical she can imagine. She understood why Pinky liked it so much, though. The ring of a bell amidst the bleach on the screen of Pinky whacking a tree monster with a sword drew Twilight's attention. She turned her head over her shoulder towards the room door. She heard some pony's footsteps on the f boutique floor. After a moment, the door opened, and Rory stepped inside. Two saddlebags thrown around her neck. She was breathing heavily, looking flustered as though she just ran a mile or two. Oh, oh goodness, I managed to get everything in one go. The way these stores are organized, it's almost as though one needs to plan a month in advance to get things done on time. Rarity lowered her head and let the bags off her shoulders, adjusting her hair with one hoof as she began removing the items. Has Twilight arrived yet, dear? Rarity asked absent mildly in Sweetie's direction, turning her head as she picked up the third object from one of her shopping bags. She paused as she caught sight of Twilight near the giant glass screen. Heavens, Twilight, I'm so sorry I'm late. With a commotion to find in the market, I completely forgot to grab a good number of things before coming back home. I hope you haven't been waiting too long. Twilight smiled reassuringly at Rarity's panic expression. It's fine, Rarity. Pinky's been showing me your new toy. Oh, yes, isn't it lovely? I can't believe such a fantastic trinket was sitting around waiting to be snatched up just in town. Of course, the screen and such sports require some heavy lifting, but there were a couple of lovely gentlemen in town willing to offer their assistance. Of course there were, Twilight thought to herself, smirking. I didn't have you pegged as I to enjoy make-believe dragon slaying, Rarity. I'm oh, not really. It was just a wonderful find. I just couldn't pass up the opportunity. Besides which, the stallion setting, it was just charming. It would have been very hard to say no. And there's only one or two little games I write up my alley. Fashion and decorations and things like that. Oh, so much fun. Hmm, maybe there's more contraption than Twilight's for giving credence. Stir. Still, she couldn't find herself more interested than than she was at the moment. I apologize for the mispronunciations and stuttering, stuttering and stuff. Yeah, that's what happens whenever I try to read this stuff. I sometimes stutter over things. That was not in the story, by the way. Hmm. Maybe there is more to contraption that Twilight is first given credence. Still, she couldn't find herself more interested than she was at the moment. Do you need any help with that, Rarity? No, no, I'm fine, Twilight, really. Have you had a chance to play something? I'm sure Pinky would be delighted to help you pick out a game. She came running as though the place had caught fire. I can smell fun from a mile away, Pinky shouted, hammering on one of her control buttons as her on the screen avatar swung, her, swung its sword wildly. I'm good, actually, though I might 
send Spike over late to take a look, if that's all right with you. I think you're more up his alley. Of course, dear. Go right ahead. I'm always happy to have a visit with my favorite little dragon. If he's over in a few hours, we can play with the girls as well. Sweet Belle invited her friends over, and I'm sure they'd love her new exquisite appliance. I don't doubt it," said Twilight. I picture the key mark crusaders yelling at each other and wrestling in the two controllers amidst three bodies flashing through her mind. Apple Bloom was the one who suggested it. Her brother was the one who helped me get the biggest screen up most of the way. That pony should be a salesman some day, I think. She managed to convince me to share a brand new purchase only a few days after. Of course, I never would have brought if her brother hadn't been there to help her carry home. This is all thrilling, Rarity, but we did have a mean plan, didn't we? Oh, of course. I apologize, Twilight. Let's lead the girls to their games and take take to the other room, shall we? All right. Um, this is the end of chapter one. So, um, see you guys next time for chapter two. And uh, I apologize in advance again for me stuttering and mispronouncing words and um murmuring stuff so see you guys next time